What is good, YouTube? Quinn Way basketball analysis coming to y'all with a quick video. This is another series that this was one of them I actually got wrong in my bracket. I had the Sixers beating my Celtics. I thought we didn't have enough. Um, they made some critical mistakes in the fourth quarters. Even in this game, we we was more poised. We was more better in execution. We was well coached. We stayed composed. Um, you know, we never got too hot in the moment. We we never got prideful. We never took that many bad shots or tried too hard. You know, and that's something that you're gonna need to beat the Warriors. So I like that Brad Stevens is you know instilling that into his players now. You gotta think about it. Jason Tatum only 20 years old. Jalen Brown not even 25. Same with the basically they they whole team is young and got a little bit of it, sprinkle of veterans in it. So you got to think that even if they don't win this series or win the championship, you know, we NBA players don't like the moral victories. But at the end of the day, they learned a lot. You know, throughout this whole season, they've been resilient. They've been fighting, coming back from big leagues, closing out games, stealing games. And, and they did that this year. You know, even in the playoffs, we was down by the Bucks, come back and get a 99 to 100 lead. Uh, we fought the Sixers in game two and came back and went and closed out that game. We, we stole th game three. We stayed composed. We didn't get ahead of ourselves. And, and we made the smart and the right plays. And, and we trusted our defense that we can get stops against anybody in the league. And Philly was a team that has been playing their best basketball. They went 16 straight to end the season. They go into the playoffs, win the series in five, get some rest because we win seven. And then, you know, they go out there and, and play like a team that wasn't poised for a championship. And even if the Celtics don't win it, they're playing like a championship team. They're believing in each other. They're playing together. They stand together. And, and they're doing the things that win championships, getting the steals, getting the blocks, stopping the players, being confident, knocking down shots, making an extra pass, keeping other people encouraged. And, and locking up the best players on the opposing team. You know, Brad Stevens and the Celtics, we, we made the Eastern Conference Finals last year. Uh, we lost in five. Isaiah Thomas went down. We was able to pull together and win a game. And, you know, we lost in five. And LeBron is the beast of the East. You know, he wants to get his, to his eight straight finals. His teammates are starting to help him. They're starting to get that confidence back. They're starting to feel themselves, and they feel like they can beat anybody. And why shouldn't the Celtics feel the same way? We was able to beat the Bucks. that was the better team on paper. We was able to play better and out-execute them, go into Philly when we was favored it. Even me as a fan, you know, they outdid those numbers at one in five, and nobody even seen them even winning in five. They thought they was going to lose. Now, I thought we was going to win more games than one, but I even picked us to lose that series. So going into this series, you got to have an open mind. We all starting to witness the greatness of Brad Stevens. We all starting to see how good team play can work and, and how good coaching can help. And also, you know, this team, they, they all feel like they're together. Nobody is better than the other player. Nobody it, it can take over. Everybody takes their spots. They, they, they step up in the big moments. They knock down the shots. They get to the paint. They get execution. They got everything that you'll want besides a superstar. But Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, I can tell you one thing. Those two guys are playing above their head. Jason Jalen Brown feel like he was an all-star this year, and he proven that he can be potentially one of them next year if he gets the minutes because, you know, k coming back and, you know, Kyrie coming back. He might get less touches, less opportunities. He's knocking down that three ball. He's confident in his jumper. He's getting to the paint. He's blowing past people. He's doing whatever he wants to people. Jason Tatum is stepping up in the fourth quarter. He's trusting his teammates. He's taking good shots. He's getting to his hot spot. He's playing like a veteran. And he's showing why the Celtics got, hey, y'all can have Markel Fultz. We'll take Jason Tatum. And you got to give credit for Danny Ainge for taking that that trade and, and trusting his instinct in his player. And he's playing just like he was 25, 27, 28 years old in his prime. He had got 20 in the last four games against the Sixers. He averaged 20 plus for the series. And he was there in the big moments. Now, this is a, the thing. So that's the half of the Celtics. Now, this is what I got to say about the Cavs. The Cavaliers are a totally different team than they was going into the playoffs. And they're a totally different team after they played the Pacers. The NBA is all about matchups. Who can take control of the matchups? Who can make the adjustments? Who can make the lineup change? Who can get the best advantage and utilize that to win the game? 
Their best advantage is LeBron James, a guy that can control the tempo, control the game, get shots off whenever he wants to, score whenever he wants to, and, and, and he's just going to need his teammates to step up. Because this Celtics team can defend. They they athletic. They're quick. They long. They're lanky. They can cover space. And you know you're going to need Kyle Korver to to step up. You're going to need J.R. Smith to step up. You're going to need Kevin Love to play like those last four, them last three games against Toronto. 20 and 10, Kevin Love. He's going to have to be active on the boards. He's going to have to be able to knock down that three-point shot. He's going to even have to be able to create his own shot in the post because I don't think Brad Stevens going to allow him to get open. I know, you know, Ty Lue no plays how to get his guys open, but the way Brad Stevens has been making adjustments and trusting in his team, he's going to have a game plan. And I think that's going to be the strongest thing that we can do against this Cavaliers team with the best player on the court. We did the same thing against Giannis and Chris Middleton, and, and I feel like we can do the same thing against this this Cavaliers team is make them earn every basket, make them get if, take perimeter shots, make them finish over length. Al Horford is a good matchup for uh, Kevin Love. He, he, he can keep up. With, he, got the, he got the mobility. He has the veteranness, and he bet, played against them before even last year. So starting Kevin Love at the five ain't that bad for us, and I think we got a good defender. We know that Al Horford can't guard LeBron. That's number two. They played time and time again last year, and with the Hawks, he could not stop LeBron. He cannot stop. Nobody in the world can stop LeBron. Let's go ahead and say it, but Al Horford is not that guy. Jalen Brown had chances to guard him last year. He couldn't do it, but that was last year, Jason Tatum. That's last year. I mean, that was last year, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is more confident. He's more swagged out. He's taking shots, taking threes, believing in it. So, so I think he's up for the challenge to guard LeBron. Will that be enough? We've seen LeBron struggle in game one against Toronto. All you can really do is make him think, make him overthink, make him try a little bit too much, and, and, and get in his head. It's tough to do because that's something that we all might do if we was defending him. But we, we all know that LeBron is one of the greatest players ever, and he's playing his best basketball. Well, some of his best box, basketball ever, and it's going to happen in this series too. So, one thing we're going to have to do is take care of the ball, stay disciplined offensively and defensively, try to get the best shots available, kind of how the Spurs beat him twice, and make him make get the toughest shots he can get. Team defense, wall him off, force him to shoot. If the jump shot is falling, try to get a hand in his face to, to make it tough. We done seen Toronto try it and it failed. Our guys a little bit more longer. We got better players that can better players that can switch compared to the Raptors. I think we can make it slow and ugly. That's our best chance. Even if we get out and run and get some easy baskets, we have Brown, we have Rosier, we have Tatum to get that done. Um, and we're gonna need guys to step up. We're gonna have to be able to score on this Cavaliers team. They're not the best defensive team, but once we see those mismatches, which Brad Stevens will see in the footage because he's studying them right now for game one. Um we're going to have to take advantage of those mismatches. We're going to have to take advantage of those, those advantage and force them to make adjustments. And then that's where it goes in our favor. We, we feel that we have the better coach. We have the better system. And we're better as a team than the Cavaliers are right now. Just because we've seen how they play against Toronto, there was a completely different team against the Pacers. This is going to sound obvious, but this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to do like the Pacers. Force LeBron to beat you and trust your offense and trust your defense. We're a better executing team. We're a better team in general. We have more talent, and we do have more athletic and length to give LeBron trouble. He's still going to do his thing, but we got to believe that our system will work. It worked the first two series, and that's the mindset we got to have going into this series. This is going to be tough. This is going to be the test, and if we can get over this hurdle as a Celtics fan, we can we we can get to the finals. The thing about it is, if somebody catch fire for Cleveland, if we make some mistakes, they're gonna burn us because Kyle Corver is a sniper, Kevin Love is a sniper, and J.R. Smith can get hot and that can motivate him to knock more tough jumpers down. He made them in Toronto, he made them in Cleveland. So we definitely want to stay home at the shooters. We definitely want them to go LeBron versus everybody, and we definitely want them to finish over length and finish through walls. We know that LeBron uh, team is a little suspect. We know that they can have bad games. We know that they mortal. We see some blood in the regular season. 
and, and we actually beat them in the regular season. So it's possible. But at the end of the day, I, I don't even know if I want to pick against the Celtics in this series. And I don't even know if I want to pick the Cavs because I don't really trust the whole team. I know what LeBron can do. I don't know if everybody else going to show up. But if you really put a gun to my head and ask me to pick, I'm going to say Celtics in six. I think we can beat the Cavs because we're the better team. We bet we execute better. We're better defensively. We're better disciplined. And I think we can stick to get a game plan and go out there and execute it better than the Cavs. And I think our role players play better consistently so far in the regular season in the playoffs than the Cavaliers together. I know this is going to be crazy. I know a lot of people are not going to like it. But, you know, Philly was tough. They had the shooters. They had the stars. Dario Sarge had a good game. Ben Simmons had a good game, five. Joel and B did with Joel and B things, and we still was able to overcome that. Out execute, out grind, make the right plays, be disciplined, get the stops, and trust the offense and trust the system. And that got us where we are today. The team in Cleveland just been too up and down, and our Celtics team been playing together all series, all season. We might get down, but we never stop fighting. And I'm picking the Celtics in six. We get home court advantage too. We've been undefeated at home, including today. And I feel like we can take that mentality going into Cleveland. I mean, going into Boston on the first game. So let me know what you guys think. I know I'm going to be on the island with this pick, but I picked the Celtics to beat the Bucks, and they had the better player. And I didn't think we can beat Philly, but I'm liking how we've been playing together. And I think that's going to be the team. The better team is going to win this series. Check out my website, AnalysisPlayground.com. Link will be in the description in the comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, AnalysisPlayground.com. Link will be in the description in, in the comment section below. Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis, I'm going. And let me know who you think going to win this series, Boston or Cleveland or LeBron. Can, can, <laughs> he, does, he, he tore us up when we had Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. But as a team, we was able to beat him a couple times. This team kind of similar to them old teams. He got a little bit more help with Kevin Love and JR and them. But they more role players. They know they role. They know they spots. And if Brad Stevens can get that good game plan and stay stick stay out on the shooter and force LeBron to take over, we can get them Celtics wins back in the day and we can get that Spurs type of win. And every win count in the playoffs is the best team to four. And I think we can beat them four times, especially because we got home court advantage. Let me know what you guys think, though.